Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Mighty God. Someone pray. You're praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You are praying that that which has been apportioned from the womb of eternity be delivered to you tonight. Shalibaka praska de balanda brazige de belekoshia. Shadebrendege balato siata. Pray without distraction. Pray fixing your eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame shabrandege balakato savredege de balakasiata shabarande kaparusia You're opening up your spirit, even in prayer. The Bible says, and as they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said to them, as they worshipped and as they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said to them, Shalika parandas katebredigaba Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, will you ransom captive Israel? Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel. He has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. You have come to us, your Israel. We rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to us, his Israel. You have come to me. Your Israel Will you speak to me Your Israel Majesty we worship you We bless you from everlasting to everlasting Your name be praised extolled and exalted even among and above the nations thank you Jesus we bless you and we ask that you will speak to us tonight even by your spirit for the Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple we humble ourselves before you and we open up our hearts to learn. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we confess even before the nations that except and unless you speak, there is no guarantee to our becoming there is no guarantee to our having. There is no guarantee to our empowerment except at the instance of your word. 
we come before you respecting the ministry of your spirit we come before you respecting the ministry of the word and we pray that again you would bless us tonight in the name of jesus many have come from far and near carrying with them burdens carrying with them expectations lord i decree and declare that every one of these needs be met tonight in the name of jesus let your word come with fire build us empower us even by your spirit and to you be all the glory for in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen god bless you please be seated hallelujah glory be to the name of the lord for the remarkable testimonies you know sometimes when i hear and see the things that god is doing through our lives and even through this ministry believe me it is all inspiring and sometimes fearful the bible says that it is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes and may i encourage you as we begin tonight's teaching to never take the doings of god for granted you must be ever attentive and be ever grateful hallelujah never get familiar with the dealings of god no The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And it says, forget not his benefits. You can receive his benefits and yet forget it. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when your crops and all of this have produced, that you will say unto yourself, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. It said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is truly he that gives power, not just power to get wealth, power to become, power to rise, power to surmount mountains. If it is ever good, God's hand is in it. Did you hear what I said? If it is ever good, it is because the hand of God is in it. And so we give him all the praise and let me appreciate every one of us I do not take for granted our commitment and our passion even concerning this vision um, time will fail me to begin to tell us testimonies the various things that people do to support what we represent and what we do there are people currently who have literally right now as we speak who have turned their homes literally into self fellowships giving an opportunity for many to just converge and hear the word and and it's not just limited to the sunday service sometimes even during the week someday we're going to stand before jesus and we will hear well done not just from the man of god but for everyone who has contributed to this project of kingdom come may you be part of it in the name of jesus amen and amen so tonight by the grace of god would be wrapping up our series we began a series a few weeks ago on let them have dominion um, this will be part three but then i'll soon give you the title for tonight like we did um, in part two i want you to insist i was so blessed when i heard the woman who was healed of cancer you see just like the woman with the issue of blood she said to herself i will not die hallelujah there is a place of your internalizing the word of god no matter how powerful and how potent the word of god is you must receive it with meekness the bible declares and then internalize it into your spirit are we together yes just hearing it alone will not profit you the Bible says, blessed is she that believes. Luke 1 and 45. It says, for unto her, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. So it is very, very important that you receive the word of God with meekness 
and listen very attentively you don't just listen with your spirit alone your mind has to be involved in transformation if you ignore your mind you will not be thoroughly blessed and for your mind to be there your entire attention has to be coordinated towards that teaching in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah let me do a very quick recap and then we'll pick it up tonight I hope that um, God will grant us speed in Jesus name let them have dominion a quick recap part one was an introduction and um, we established a few things in part one we said how that God is the exclusive owner of all things and that includes all power we were able to bring the difference between power and authority we said power is the capacity to influence or to change while authority is the right to represent and the legitimacy to use power hallelujah that you can have power but you need authority to use power legitimately so you need both power and authority there are many people who have power but they do not have the authorization you can buy a gun for instance but you need the the laws of the land alongside the institutions that legitimize you're using it otherwise you can use the gun the problem is not the gun the problem is you had power without authority we said a few things about authority that authority comes with a predefined jurisdiction authority comes with restriction and then we said dominion is the right to govern the right to exert sovereign control over a territory hallelujah we said when it has to do with dominion there are conditions we went further to explain the meaning of the statement let them have dominion we said number one that let them have dominion implied that man from time is the legal steward and the ruler of earth please follow carefully so that you will understand tonight's teaching that the implication of let them have dominion means that God legitimized man that means anyone who is not man cannot have dominion on earth and I did tell you the condition to be a man the first condition to be a man is that you must be a spirit remember and that spirit must reside in a human body there are other kinds of bodies but for you to be called man if you are a spirit trapped in the body of a monkey or a dog you are a living being but you are not man the spirit has to be trapped in a human body and must have the faculties of the will the emotions and the intellect midwifing the spirit and the body that dominion was given to men number two let them have dominion meant that nothing legal nothing legal happens in the earth without the cooperation and the participation of man that's the implication of let them have dominion nothing at all happens on earth without the cooperation and the participation of man I did correct something that I want to quickly just bring in um, most books and many preachers who talk about dominion would say man would need to give God permission um, I think they are sincere but based on scripture there is no record where God is limited to man to give him permission I think the correct word there is cooperation and participation not permission God being the sole creator of the heavens and the earth has the exclusive power to do everything as he pleases and he would not be in error are we together he gave the command to man and if God changes today and transfers the authority to plants and animals he is still just because he is God are we together yeah. but then it's important for us to know that for everything that happens on earth even in my life and your life there has to be the cooperation and the participation of man number three let them have dominion meant that man became the most valuable asset in the earth I pray you remember this and that it stays with you forever that man today as far as the earth is concerned is the most valuable asset in the earth needed 
both by God and by Satan. This is very important. So whether it is Satan or God, man is the object of their desire and even obsession. Finally, we said, let them have dominion meant that all of creation could praise God and can praise God and should praise God. But only man can cooperate with him directly to enforce his will on earth. Plants and animals, all other created beings can praise God, but only man can enforce the will of God on earth. Hallelujah. And then part two, we called it the mystery of altars and we discussed extensively about altars. Hallelujah. We did say a few things that I'd want to quickly recap. We said an altar is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds we also established that an altar is a platform for authorization of laws and authorization of spirits to function on earth let me repeat that definition that an altar is a platform that authorizes laws whether physical or spiritual and then it authorizes spirits to function in the earth Number three, we establish that an altar is also a platform where covenants are activated and covenants are maintained. In ancient times, altars were largely physical monuments that were built. And we said um, they could also be institutions, men, and non-material platforms. We established that the patriarchs exerted dominion upon the earth because they understood the mystery of altars the high point in our teaching was the understanding of the major assignment of altars and let me repeat for those of us who may have forgotten the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth Please pay attention. The major assignment of an altar is to give number one, authorization, and number two, continuity to any spiritual activity on earth, whether godly or demonic. That means any activity you see on earth that is sustained over a long period of time, over generations, it, it has derived its longevity from the presence of an altar hallelujah and we establish also that you can know the presence of an altar in any life in any family and in any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether good or bad so you know that there is the presence of an altar negatively or positively in a life a family and institution because of the consistency of operations we listed some examples the blessing of the jewish nation there is an altar that speaks and activates the abrahamic blessing upon them and we said example of negative altars all kinds of wrong addictions negative patterns infirmities and mysterious diseases sexual perversions of all sorts poverty lack and hardship i hope you still remember mental depression and mental health witchcraft and idol worship untimely death stagnation and delays near success syndrome barrenness and short-lived success and so on and so forth that all these things are powered and are possible and remain because of altars we went further to establish how altars work I did tell us, and please, this is worthy of, of um, reminder, that all satanic altars are powered by one principal altar called the altar of sin and iniquity. This is the ultimate altar that powers every other. And I told us that sin can be personal, can be territorial, and can be based on foundations and bloodline. 
I said all good altars are powered by one major altar the Bible calls it the throne of grace alongside the blood of Jesus that means everything that happens perpetually in the life of the believer that is good is powered by this very altar called the throne of grace hallelujah we wrapped up that teaching by learning how to raise and maintain altars i gave us a few keys a final recap on them and then we'll go into the teaching for tonight we observed that we today do not raise altars by erecting physical structures or monuments we do not necessarily erect altars as they did in you know in the bible we said how that for you to be able to build to raise and to maintain an altar a few keys would have to be captured in your experience number one is repentance and brokenness for those of you who were not here you may do well to jot that down you can as well get the teaching the mystery of altars on koinonia global so repentance and brokenness that is the first key to raising and maintaining altars number two the word of god you must honor and exalt the ministry of the word number three sacrifice and we said that when it has to do with sacrifice there are three levels of sacrifice the first is the sacrifice of yourself according to romans 12 and 1 then the sacrifice of praise and worship and then finally or in fact i gave four the sacrifice of your prayers and then the sacrifice of your seed hallelujah the lord challenged us and we sow to that effect to prophetically break the hold of negative altars and finally to raise an altar we establish that there must be prophetic decrees hallelujah prophetic decrees altars without words do not have value hallelujah aside from the sacrifices there are words that must be spoken prophetically and we thank god for the testimonies that have come from these teachings i hope you are learning and growing even through these teachings hallelujah these teachings are meant they, they are sent by god through his vessel to build and to to mature us especially in terms of our spiritual understanding no one who is part of this vision for a reasonable period of time should entertain certain levels of ignorance hallelujah the word of god has come with clarity and precision enough to jumpstart your process to growth and maturity and if you remain a baby christian then it will be purely an act of irresponsibility with all due respect hallelujah we have a commitment to ourselves to take advantage of the word of god personalize it believe it engage it so that it will produce for us in the name of jesus now let's look at part three we'll be doing the same thing that we did when we discussed part two the emphasis will be the topic and then in bracket you put let them have dominion um i title part three the ordinances of heaven the ordinances of heaven then you put in bracket let them have dominion part three the reason why we decided to allow the emphasis to be the topic is so that um, if you need to make reference to any of the parts sometimes you may just need to discuss on altars you may need to learn to pray it will save you the stress of having to wonder which of the parts you know contains that and then it can help you to also give give people so the ordinances of heaven father open our eyes and grant us understanding in jesus name i want you to please pay attention to this teaching tonight this is one of those teachings that will um will help you to practically walk in dominion hallelujah i will be revealing to us and teaching us by the spirit of god how to walk in dominion practically job chapter 33 and verse 38 and verse 33 
Job chapter 38 and verse 33. Job is having a discussion with the God of heaven now. And there's a question there. We'll read in KJV, then we'll go to New Living Translation or um, Contemporary English Version. I'd like you to see the expressions there. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? It's a question. It says, canst thou establish or set the dominion thereof in the earth? Let's see what other version we can find. NLT says, do you know the laws of the universe? Can you use them to regulate the earth? Let's look at contemporary English version. I like that one. CEV. Please give it to us if you can find it. That one expresses it very powerfully. It says, do you know? Okay, well, that's fine. We'll work with NIV. Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? That is our assignment tonight. Hallelujah. No, that's fine. The message does not do the kind of justice we are looking for. You just keep NIV for us. The point is for you to understand that these laws are laws that were brought from a dimension that is not earthly and that these laws can be engaged to superimpose the will of God. That means dominion will remain impossible until we understand what the Bible calls the ordinances of heaven. Are we learning? Many people do not know this and they intend to walk in dominion and yet they find out that their lives never capture that experience of dominion. Psalms 49 and verse 20. Back to KJV. Psalm 49 and verse 20. 49 and verse 20. The Bible says, Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like a beast in the field that perisheth. Do you know what this means? If you have been ordained for a life of dominion, a life of excellence and grace, and yet you are ignorant of it, it says you will die like a beast in the field. There are many beasts in the field that are praise to other beasts that are stronger than them. So it is possible to see one of the beasts in the morning and in two hours, it's already dead. And all you see there is just the, the bones and the, the remains. The Bible says your life, listen carefully, it says that your life will be a product of um, circumstances and the vicissitudes of life. There will be no predictability to your Christian experience except you walk by and through the ordinances of heaven. Write this down. Dominion on earth has two major expressions. Dominion on earth has two major expressions. That means every time you see dominion on earth, there are two major expressions. Number one, dominion is expressed in creation and manifestation. That is the first expression of dominion. Creation and manifestation of divine possibilities. You are walking in dominion on earth to the degree to which your life is able to create and manifest divine possibilities. Hallelujah. We see that clearly in Genesis chapter 1. When you read verse 3, the first four words, or the first uh, maybe five or six, and God said, let there be. The Hebrew rendition says, and Elohim said, light be creation and manifestation. That is the first expression of dominion. If it is true that dominion is at work in your life, then we see creation and the manifestation of divine possibilities. The second expression of dominion that we must see in your life and your environment for us to say you are walking in dominion is correction and restoration. We must see creation and manifestation, but we must also see correction and restoration. The second expression of dominion is correction 
and restoration. What does this mean? Bringing every antichrist condition to the obedience of Christ. Listen carefully. Bringing every antichrist condition to the obedience of Christ. If these two expressions are not captured in your life perpetually or captured in a territory, you cannot say dominion is working. So it's not just an, um, an English expression to say I have dominion. I am giving you the biblical litmus test, the indices, the expressions. Every time you say someone is walking in dominion, we check for these two things. Number one, is there perpetual creation and manifestation of divine possibilities in your life your family your environment that is the degree to which dominion is finding expression number two do we see correction and restoration that means do we see you demonstrating the power that brings every antichrist condition oh you'll be so blessed tonight you just pay attention correction and restoration why correction because jesus in speaking about the issue of marriage he made a very profound statement he says for in the beginning it was not so that is why dominion must be expressed as correction and restoration because there are many things that now are that were not so so the assignment to correct and to bring restoration to our lives We all walk in dominion to the degree to which we create and manifest divine possibilities and also the degree to which we correct and restore all things to the obedience of Christ. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's walk on a few scriptures now. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. That means the end product of dominion is the obedience of Christ every condition that is antichrist the ability to exert an influence over it so when the sick is healed when the poor becomes prosperous that is dominion there you are correcting a spiritual anomaly and you are restoring all things to the obedience of Christ second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 shows us the power of dominion to correct. The, the reason why we can correct things is the Bible says here that the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. That means any physical condition you see under a certain condition, you can correct it. This is why we believe in miracles. This is why we believe in transformation, that Saul can become Paul. Let it not surprise you, therefore, when God begins to turn your life around. You shouldn't be surprised because that possibility is already captured in the law of God. That anything you see that manifests is only a baby that came from a mother called the realm of the spirit. And that you are able to transform things, you are able to renew, you are able to change. That means if my condition does not look like Christ, I have a right to exert dominion until it changes. If you're with me, say amen. amen. I'm sure this is a word of hope already for many people. It then means that I have a responsibility to search every area of my life. And my assignment in that search is to look for the areas that have refused to line up with that which is consistent as revealed in Christ. And my assignment is to take advantage of the laws I'm going to be showing you to force those conditions to change. He's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. He's the Holy 
Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's restoring everything in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. Are we learning already? So two expressions of dominion in our lives, creation and manifestation, correction and restoration. Now, when it has to do with the subject of dominion, please look up. There is a principal factor and there is a constant in that equation that we need to discuss briefly. It's called the Word of God. Please write it down. We have to touch on the Word of God very briefly. There is no possibility of walking in dominion until and unless you understand the supremacy of the Word of God. The Word of God. The Bible talks about the Word of God and its supreme power to be the basis for all creation, all correction, all restoration and all manifestation if it is true that dominion is expressed in creation slash manifestation or correction slash restoration and the bible says unless without the word of god all of these aforementioned cannot even happen are we together it says without him was not anything made that was made what does the Bible have to say about the Word of God? A few scriptures very quickly. Number one, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. It says, The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. Now, verse 3. And God said, that means the Bible now reveals something very powerful about the Word of God. Immediately that the Word of God, listen carefully, the Word of God does not come into God. The Word of God comes out of God. It is God itself. Are we together? God does not meditate on scripture in heaven. He only did that when he became a man. God does not do Bible study and prayer meeting to grow in revelation. He is God. Are you getting the point now? Yes. Man has to draw from scripture and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But God himself does not need any other source to feed him with the word of God. It comes out of him and it, that qualifies the word of God to be God. John 1 verse 1 gives us perspective on this. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God verse 2 it says the same was in the beginning with God the only thing that we see that was with God in Genesis 1 were his words and the Bible says that word was God John 1 14 John chapter 1 and 14 we're looking at a few things about the word. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. This is another information about the word of God, that the word of God is the compendium of grace and truth. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Every time you are looking for grace and every time you are looking for truth, find the word because when you find the word then you find grace and you find truth are we learning colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 we're examining the supremacy of the word of god the bible says for by him the him being the word personified were all things created are you seeing our expression of dominion there again created that means anytime i want to create and manifest possibilities i cannot do that outside of the word of god is someone learning by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether there be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him 
So if my future becomes created, don't ask me how it happened. The word of God sustains the power to create tomorrow. It means I don't need to wait for tomorrow to enter it. It's a risk to enter it tomorrow I'm not sure of. I can create it by the power of the word. Are we together? Hmm. What else do we learn about the word? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. This is powerful. 4 and 12. The word of God is quick. Say hallelujah. As slow as God looks, when his word begins to walk, the Bible says the word of God is quick. So it should not surprise you that by this time tomorrow, your life would have turned around. I'm not entertaining you. You believe me. I say it one more time. That you will be, don't be surprised that once you are seated here, you will turn back and find out that those mountains are not there. Because the word of God is quick. Please give it to us. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says it pierces to the dividing of the soul and spirit. Can you imagine? Surgeons, medical doctors, consultants. You cannot divide the body. Medicine has not perfected the art of separating the body, soul and spirit. Uh -uh. At best, they have done well to divide twins, people who have been, you know, joined and very complicated surgeries. But there is a limit to medicine. Beyond the realm of the flesh, only the word of God takes charge. It can enter the realm of the spirit and still exact dominion. Please keep that scripture there. The Bible says, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, no one that deliverance is possible because a spirit can hide and latch on to your soul and with precision without harming your own spirit another spirit can leave imagine if we had to use a knife to separate you and a demon we will enjoy you halfway because these demons their determination you can see the way they hold you by how sickness latches onto human bodies they won't let you go easily. The word of God is able to pierce to the dividing asunder of the spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What do we learn again about the word of God? Hebrews 11 and verse 3. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Do you know what that meant? The word frame means they had their jurisdiction and even their material expression by the word of God. Manifestation. All of these possibilities only happen because of the word. So, the foundation, listen carefully, the foundation for dominion, the constant factor in the dominion equation is the word of god the individuals may vary their approach may vary but the one thing that must be constant ladies and gentlemen if you must walk in dominion is the word of god if you're with me say amen, amen. the word of god is so powerful psalm 138 and verse 2 here's what the bible says about the word that God placed so much value upon the word. It says, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Let's read together. One to go. For thou hast magnified thy word above all your names. You know the names is called? Way make a miracle walk, promise keeper. My God. That is who you are. Let me tell you what that means. There is no way maker. There is no miracle worker. There is no promise keeper. There is no light in the darkness without the word. He has brought all his offices and submitted to the word. That is the meaning of that statement. He has exalted. Do you know what that means? He has limited himself to the operation of the word. That means 
there are many things God can do, but if the word does not allow him, he will not do it. Ah. Listen. Most of the world's superpowers have nuclear weapons right now. Is that true? Those nuclear weapons, if you release them now, they can literally end certain nations and territories in a moment. But they have submitted the nuclear weapons to nuclear wars, either by EU or whatever it is. Is that true? So although they have the potential, they are not at liberty to do with it as they please. They have to submit. That is how God, he is all powerful, but he has only limited his operation to that which the word of God allows. That means the jurisdiction of God's dealings with man is not his power, it is his word. Let me repeat myself again. How far God can go with you is not determined by his power, it's determined by his word. Let them have dominion. It is amazing how many believers ignore the word of God and want to walk in the experience of dominion. That will be far from your Christian experience if you do not value the word of God. Listen, we may argue about denominational stands. We may argue about different approaches as far as our Christian experience is concerned. But believers, one thing we must never argue, argue about is the supremacy of the word of God. Because if for any reason we exalt visions more than the word, you have heard me teach you here and I will keep teaching. It is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. It is written is greater than I dreamt. I can change what I saw with what is written. I can change what I heard with what is written. I can change the dream I had with what is written. I can change every prophetic word with what is written. When you know this, you become confident. You respect visions and prophecies. But only unless they line up with the word. So if you have a vision today that I'm going to die, you may not be lying. That may be the preparation in the realm of the spirit. Except for the fact that you see, at the point of execution, that's when dominion is displayed. Not the point of planning. No. There are many things we have planned in various nations, but the wherewithal to execute, we aborted several projects. The ability to execute that which was planned is where dominion comes into place. So it is true that the devil may want to kill me tomorrow, any day, whatever it is. That, that is not even news. You don't even need to be a prophet to know that. Is that true? Why do we remain? Because it is written, I know whom I believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed unto him against that day the question is has this been committed to him are we together otherwise you will live a life of unnecessary fear and headache that will translate into all kinds of sicknesses that the hospital will not be able to diagnose your confidence should never be just because joshua selman said i have taught you this you only believe Joshua Selman if what he has said is consistent with that which is written. Let's remind ourselves again. Shout it is written. Let the devil hear you say it is written. Hmm. This, is, this is the badge and the symbol of everybody who must walk in dominion. The same way you see people walk in a diplomatic center, they have their ID cards, and with it they can swipe and pass through complicated doors you have no right to enter that realm of dominion if all you are carrying is a vision if all you are carrying is a prophetic word it does not have to be fake even if it is real the system of confirmation is to what degree does it line up with the word of god many people have become victims of prophecies victims of a lot of spiritual experiences because they do not know the power of the word i've taught you this so if you sleep and you have a bad dream a terrible dream and in that dream 
you see yourself dying or something negative by the time you get up and agree with that dream you have empowered it to manifest that dream is at the mercy of your action all the demons assigned to bring that dream to pass are at the mercy of your knowledge or ignorance so the devil knowing that you may not know enough he will now use fear fear is like a a device that presses the go button by force every other spirit waits for the spirit of fear to open the door any door that fear does not open no other spirit can function and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage is someone learning very important so the word of god now let me tell you this revelation chapter 5 please from verse 4 and 5 one more point about the word of god and then we begin to teach on the rules of engagement and i wept much this is john the prophet now john was caught up in the isle of patmos remember for the testimony of jesus and he was caught up to the third heavens and he was now documenting his encounters i wept much why because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read the book neither to look thereon verse 5 and one of the elders said unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof pay attention notice how to have access to the riches of the book number one the book must be open number two the seals must be loosed this is a very powerful revelation you will never be able to access the riches of the word just by opening it please look at this this is the bible this is open but it does not mean the seal has been unlocked opening it is physical unlocking the seal is spiritual so you can open the bible and all you are reading is history all you are reading is literature all you are reading is archaeology all you are reading is poetry but when the spirit of grace unlocks the seven seals and you may say i'm educated i mean i went to school i have phd i have all of that you see when it comes to spiritual things assimilating spiritual things must go past the realm of intellect you know this by now isaiah 29 let's look at verse 11 and 12 isaiah 29 I believe it's verse 11 please give it to us it says the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed someone says sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot why for it is sealed verse 12 and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned so when it has to do with the opening of the book and the riches therein whether you are learned or unlearned if you are learned it can only open for you but it takes the spirit of god to break the seals your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will see of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise no wonder the psalmist said open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things even from out of thy law someone say the word of God now having established the fact that the word of God 
is the foundation for dominion and that all things including all other laws submit to the word of God let us now discuss the ordinances of heaven what is an ordinance please write what is an ordinance an ordinance is a law set forth by a governmental authority my apologies please write fast an ordinance is a law set forth by a governmental authority a law that is set forth by a governmental authority another definition an ordinance is a decree another definition the one that applies to us now an ordinance is an authorized pathway or approach one more time an ordinance is number one a law that is set forth by a governmental authority number two an ordinance is a decree number three an ordinance is an authorized pathway please underline authorized pathway or approach that means when we say the ordinances of heaven we mean god's authorized approach the system that was set up by god himself to guarantee dominion there are many illegal paths that spirits and even men have followed in an attempt to exert different levels of dominion they have several side effects for instance losing your soul to gain the whole world gaining the whole world looks like dominion over material things but because you are not following an ordinance that was set up by god the ordinance of heaven the side effect if you ever try to acquire material things outside of the way provided by scripture the bible already tells you that there will be a side effect the side effect is that you will lose your soul so it says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul satan tempting jesus took him and showed him the glories of all the world in a passage of time and said bow to me and i will give you hallelujah an ordinance is an authorized pathway my goodness that means every time you walk in that ordinance there is predictability to your result are we learning now when you walk in keeping with the ordinances of heaven as touching any and every area of your life the resultant effect will be dominion follow me as i share with you a rundown of the rules of engagement you want to walk in dominion practically here are the biblical keys all together they are called the ordinances of heaven number one are you ready the first ordinance of heaven that controls dominion is the knowledge knowledge in fact but more particularly the knowledge of the promises of God knowledge that means dominion in this kingdom was tied and bound to knowledge based on the ordinances of god there cannot be dominion in ignorance is someone learning now yes that is the purpose of scripture to help you gain knowledge of the principles i have taught you here that the bible essentially contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies you must know what the bible says not just have a bible you must know what scripture says a few scripture a few scriptures for to establish this point john chapter 8 and verse 32 and ye shall know the truth not just have the truth you can be around the truth it will not profit you you can be in possession of the truth it will not profit you like many people have their bibles they hold it sanctimoniously they move around many people have their libraries full of all kinds of bibles contained in those books are kingdom secrets and yet they continue to suffer somebody say knowledge 
Psalms 49 and verse 20, we already established that that man that is in honor and does not know it, he will die like a beast in the field. Luke chapter 4, please, from verse 15 to 17. Is God helping us? Say amen. The Bible says, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. We're reading to 17. Next verse. And it came to pass where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Watch this now, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found. Oh, I like this. When he opened the book, when did he find? There are many things you will only find when you open the book. There are many realms you will only find when you open the book. There are many testimonies you will only find when you open the book. The Bible says when he opened the book, he found. For someone, this is your word tonight. God is telling you, you have not found many things because you have closed the book. If you have a determination to open the book, you will find. Now the Bible says, please keep that scripture. He found the place where it was written when you find the place where it is written now you have committed god i told you god is only committed to the degree to which it is written not just to the degree to which he loves you not just the degree to which he's powerful god is committed please listen burn this in your spirit if you want to walk in dominion no wonder this already answers the question why children or people can be dying around the world and yet the almighty God who is full of love. Many people say why does evil happen to good people? Because the modus operandi of heaven is by the word of God, not just his love. He loves everybody but he is bound to his word. The principles contained therein. If you lack knowledge of scripture, knowledge of the promises of God you are far from walking in dominion can I tell you if you are not exerting dominion someone or something will exert it on you is that true give us that scripture let's finish it up he found he opened the book and he found the place where it was written in the name of Jesus may you found where it was written open the place and find where it is written that regardless your background you will be exalted above the nations of the earth when you find it god is ready to come to to be committed to your affairs the knowledge of the promises say knowledge in the name of jesus obtain grace to fight ignorance now you see why it is important to come to the house of god because among the many things that are served in the house of God according to Jeremiah 315 is knowledge 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 he says and I will give you pastors according unto my heart they will feed you with knowledge and understanding two important elements I'm going to connect them shortly someone say knowledge, knowledge. ignorance is terrible the Bible shows us and even history and today's world our living today tells us the moment you are in ignorance any kind and any level of ignorance it will come with a cost rules of engagement you want to operate the ordinances of heaven number one you must understand that dominion is knowledge dependent high level spiritual illumination knowledge you must know what is there for you I remember an old story I can't remember which preacher um, spoke about it but it's a very old story about someone who boarded a ship going somewhere and the person did not know that part of the, the the ticket he purchased had free maybe dinner or so and the guy was starving quietly in his room happy and grateful for even being in that ship and his position was vacant every night and then one of the attendants came to knock his door to find out if he was all right. And he said, look, I'm fine. He was managing a biscuit or something. Every day he would take a little of it. 
and they said sorry we noticed you've not come to it ah no 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 i can't don't embarrass me i'm more than happy to be here i'm only praying that we arrive safely and the woman had to educate him to tell him no 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 it was already covered in your ticket and the man was angry like some of you are angry now that so i could be blessed five years ago so i could be lifted 10 years ago so these demons didn't have that kind of power over me you can imagine that that man will say go on let's count from how many days we started ah everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you hey everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me now is it making sense to you what we began to discuss that the expressions of dominion has to do with number one creation slash manifestation two correction and restoration correction and manifest and restoration so knowledge very quickly let's rush number two what is the second ordinance of heaven as far as walking in dominion is concerned are you ready the knowledge of the conditions or demands that activate the promises it is one thing to know the promises but you must know the conditions and the demands that activate the operation of those promises please write this down this is what the bible calls understanding write it please knowledge as powerful as it is is only the first key you can have knowledge and still perish mm. knowledge here talks about awareness i know that it is in my destiny to be great I know that I am a believer in Christ. I should be raised, I'm raised above situations and circumstances. But just having that head knowledge, that awareness, does not make it your experience. The knowledge of the conditions is someone learning now. That means your knowledge is not complete until you find out the conditions or the demands that activate the promise you just learned about. The knowledge of the conditions the requirements to activate the promises this is what the bible calls understanding no wonder it says in all you're getting get understanding is it in your bible you now see that a good man of god should not just give you knowledge according to jeremiah 3 15 if a man of god gives you knowledge alone that may not do you justice it must be knowledge awareness and then understanding an in-depth explanation of the demands and the dynamics that activate and release that promise leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the lord commanded moses 9 and 6 this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you now you can read that the glory of the lord should appear and just stand there and say i know the glory of the lord will appear and nothing happens because there is something that you must do i submit to you that many believers have done well in terms of you know giving themselves that spiritual orientation to know that which has been freely given to us but very few believers have gone past the realm of knowledge to comprehension understanding no wonder many believers say it is all up to god if god is going to do it you will do it no there are many things god wants to do but he's restrained by our ignorance understanding deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass popular scripture if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do take note all his commandments which i commanded this day so that is the condition what is the result of that condition the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth you know why i use this scripture all the time because it has become a personal revelation for me believe me 
I studied this scripture until I truly believed it and I found the conditions and I said that's it verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord in John chapter 2 the wedding in Cana for sake of time we'll just go straight to verse 5 Mary is giving them a very powerful counsel hallelujah John chapter 2 the wedding in Cana the Bible says his mother saith unto his servants the wine finished now remember and you know they were getting embarrassed and they came to plead with Mary to talk to her son Jesus and the mother said don't embarrass me while we are going now make sure as you are following me you are determined to do whatever he tells you that is my counsel his mother said unto them whatsoever he saith unto you do it it is more than saying it it is doing it God can say unto you you are blessed but if you don't do that which activates the blessing you can remain with knowledge you are not in ignorance and yet never walk into the experience of it everybody say knowledge number two say understanding one more time say knowledge number two say understanding now let me give you something very powerful the knowledge of the truth I wrote here and the understanding of the conditions that activate the truth equal revelation the knowledge of the truth and the understanding of the conditions that activate that truth is what is equal revelation so don't you say I have revelation of scripture if you just have knowledge no for you to say you have come to a point of revelation you must have knowledge you must have understanding you may want to write for remembrance knowledge of the truth plus understanding of the conditions equal revelation no wonder apostle paul taught the church in corinth he was praying ephesians 1 and verse 15 now you will understand by this expression i just gave you wherefore i also we're reading to 17 it says after i have heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all the saints 16 it says cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers can we read verse 17 together one to read that the god of our lord jesus christ uh-huh the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of revelation in the knowledge stop are you seeing now in the knowledge in that knowledge that is where you find revelation knowledge is like a shell it carries within it revelation knowledge is the parable of the ten virgins revelation is the depth and the spiritual meaning that you can draw from it knowledge is reading the story of israel wow you mean this guy suffered like this but pharaoh must be a wicked man he didn't even pity them knowledge are we together revelation is now where you understand that they are passing through the red sea is a type of the new birth experience that separated them with egypt forever it didn't separate them from enemies but it separated them from egypt hallelujah most people do not have revelation that is the reason why they cannot walk in dominion we pride ourselves respectfully speaking especially in the body of Christ we pride ourselves as men of God pastors apostles teachers there is so much knowledge but believe me when I tell you there is little revelation because once revelation comes that's what you call light knowledge is the bulb understanding is the switch revelation is the light you can be in a room the bulb is there the switch is there but you are still dark 
So if the problem you need is not a new bulb, the bulb there is working. The problem is not the switch, it is not spoiled. Yet the light cannot come. For someone you already have the bulb, it has been there for decades. The switch is there. Even written on slash off. And when demons want to punish you, they will block where the switch is so that you cannot even see it again. But when you come for koinonia like this, among the many things that God does, is he shows you that there is a beautiful bulb there. The knowledge you already have. Then he shows you the switch. And then he says, Apostle, now I leave the rest. And then I will lead you. And say you should own it in such a way that the light comes on it and tie it to remain on there. So that there is no more darkness because he called the light day and the darkness he called night so light is not just day is not just the passage of time i have taught you anytime your light comes your day has come even if it's by 12 midnight once your light comes it no longer becomes night the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world He heals all the bruises inflicted by His world Hallelujah Someone light is coming for you now In the name of Jesus Christ With light there is confidence When there is darkness you walk gradually Your hands first or your feet first You are not sure what will hit you Something will hit you and yet you cannot know. But right now, once there is light, you can run around the room. So there is speed with light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Listen. Brothers and sisters, we must obtain grace from God to move past the realm of knowledge, as important as it is. And then with understanding, that brings you to the realm of revelation. Is someone learning? Ordinance number one, a recap. Knowledge. Knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the promises. Awareness of what God has left in store for you. Ordinance number two, understanding, a comprehension of the demands. Please underline it, tied, whatever you need to do. That means before you think of approaching any matter, find out, do I understand the demand or the requirement to activate it? Number three, someone ready for number three? The third key is the faith. To engage the principles faith to engage the principles you have knowledge you have understanding so now you have revelation but you see knowing what to do and knowing how to do it does not mean it will be done I have taught you extensively on faith but permit me to just touch even if it's just a scripture I have taught you that faith in one word is obedience every time we talk about faith let it not be a complicated concept in one word faith is obedience everywhere you see the word faith in the Bible you can almost satisfactorily replace it with the word obedience and you will not be in error faith in one word is obedience a better expression the action you take based on your conviction 
of who God is and the integrity of his person. That is called faith. And the Bible says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our actions of obedience, faith. Hebrews chapter 4, we'll read verse 1 and 2, then we'll jump to verse 9 and we'll end at 11. The Bible says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So two categories of people, us and them. But the word preached did not profit them. It didn't release to them its potentials, not being mixed with obedience. Are you seeing now? Not being mixed with action in them that heard it. Verse 9. There remained therefore, precious people of God, a rest. They are the people of God, but there is a kind of spiritual Sabbath financial sabbath that god wants to bring you into verse 10 it says we're reading to 11 for he that is entered into his rest he hath also ceased from his own works as god did from his here is the charge let us labor therefore what is the labor the labor of faith the labor of believing the labor of understanding and the labor of acting let us labor to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief everybody say faith without faith there is no dominion if God has told you that you can step into financial dominion now you know that the promises are there for you and then you learn by by scripture the principles that are allocated for dominion now you know your own commitment it is up to you now to begin to manifest faith the giving experientially the diligence the value the connection strategically through relationships all of these things until you do them you are not walking by faith faith is not saying what god has said it is only part of faith real faith is doing what god has said you can say what God has said. Congratulations. Confession is important. We are getting there. But you must do what God has said. Now let me teach you something very quickly. According to scripture, there are three levels of faith. We'll find somewhere now, I think just one, two more points, and then we'll pray. I need to teach you this. There are three levels of faith because you have an assignment to grow your faith. The pace with which you believe and obey God is the pace with which you keep getting results even dominion number one the bible identifies a condition called no faith mark 4 from verse 35 to 40 mark 4 from verse 35 to 40 no faith and the same day when the even was come he said unto them let us pass over to the other side uh-huh and the bible says they left the multitude and then they sailed to the other side. Verse 37. The Bible says, There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. 38. The Bible says that Jesus was at the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That means anxiety is proof of the absence of faith. 39. He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto it, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now, 40. And he said unto them, Why is it that ye are so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? It is possible for a believer to have zero faith. The same way you score zero in a subject, you can have zero faith. John 20, 27. John chapter 20 and verse 27. Remember Thomas, our wonderful Thomas? We, every time we have blackmailed people with Thomases, and, and every time they say Thomas, we mean somebody who does not believe. But that's not true. Thomas had the courage to come close to Jesus. What of Thomas being intimacy? You see? What of Thomas being intimacy with Jesus Christ? Then he said to Thomas, reach hither 
thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither my hands and thrust into my side he says and be not faithless but believing so you can have zero faith shout god forbid let the devil hear you no faith number two we have small or weak faith the bible tells us that we can have small or weak faith matthew chapter 6 and verse 30 matthew chapter 6 and verse 30 it says wherefore if god so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall ye shall he not much more clothe you o ye of little faith matthew chapter 8 and verse 26 matthew 8 and verse 26 he said unto them why are ye fearful have are you noticing that there is always a relationship between fear and no faith or little faith O ye of little faith he arose rebuked the wind and all of that and then um one last scripture romans chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 this is abraham now god's god's expression of faith and the blessing the bible says who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be 19. the bible says and be not weak in faith be not weak in faith so you can be weak in faith and one of the ways you become weak in faith is by considering by creating logic how will god do this the bible says they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah then we have strong or great faith strong or great faith just write for reference we may not read it matthew 15 21 to 28 talks of strong or great faith but we'll read romans 4 and verse 20 romans 4 and verse 20 still talking about abraham he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god so we see that there is no faith there is small or weak faith and there is strong or great faith some of us are on zero faith you are welcome hearing the word now we'll start priming that that condition and then many of us have remained at the realm of small or weak faith but i pray that everybody that we join this category of day whose faith is very strong if you believe that say amen, amen. ordinance number four am i right on that ordinance number four these are the authorized pathways in the spirit for dominion remember number one you must have knowledge dominion is knowledge dependent awareness of the promises awareness of truth number two understanding a comprehension of the demands and the principles that activate the promises and commit god then number three you must be ready and willing to act and to act completely now number four the fourth ordinance of dominion is called the power of words this is a kingdom that operates by words this is a kingdom that is voice activated dominion in this kingdom is voice activated the power of words this is where the ministry of prayer and the ministry of prophetic declaration comes the ministry of prayer falls under this ordinance of words the ministry of prophetic declarations and decrees falls under the ordinance of words there is no true dominion in silence words have to be captured for dominion to be established hallelujah now please look up if words are that important as far as activating and establishing dominion is concerned you now see why things like prayerlessness are a disaster that if you are not prayerful you will destroy your your life and your destiny and sabotage your potentials for walking in dominion hallelujah 
Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 and God said words and God said let there be and there was Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 we're looking at the fourth ordinance the Bible says where the word of a king is there is power say I am royalty one more time say I am royalty that means your words should not be without power but there has to be words first before power where the word of a king is some of you as you said I'm royalty the devil said even you you better say it again say I'm royalty because when you say I'm royalty this 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 some of this the way some of us have suffered and we've been defeated by satan you know he just tempts you and say you better don't say that those who have power are saying it and you who just came to church for the first time you are also saying you are royalty yes sir if he talks to you like that tell him it is written is greater than what i'm hearing i've told you you don't have to feel like royalty to say you are royalty the baby who is born from a royal palace the baby does not even know that he or she is royalty but it does not change the fact anyway are we together mm. he has made us unto our god kings and priests i wanted to say say you are a king but if you say you are a king ladies if you say you are a queen somebody who's a queen of the coast and that's why i said say royalty <laughs> i'm not queen of any coast you are royalty seated with christ listen to me in the realm of the spirit there is no male declaration or female declaration there is no male prayer or female prayer are we together there is only prayer that works or prayer that does not work watch this the bible says in job 22 and 28 we are still looking at the power of words thou shall also decree a thing the bible declares and it shall be established unto thee who is the thee the thee who made the decree not just he who was watching as they were making thou shall decree a thing please i want you to understand that the dynamics of dominion demands that there must be words there must be words that is why the assignment of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where you cannot speak what is wrong I know God can do it. That means close my door, go out of there. But for someone, even with no money in your pocket, you will declare, walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I am walking in abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ, words. Write this down, please. In Mark chapter 11, when you read from verse 12 to 14, and then you go to 20 to 24, just write it for reference, Mark 11, 12 to 14, and then 20 to 24. This was when Jesus came and saw a fig tree that had leaves but no fruit, and he cursed it and said, no man eateth of you again hallelujah and then remember from that according to mark's account he went to flog people in the temple and then he, when they returned back by the morrow they found out that the tree was withered and they said master you said this and it has happened and he began to speak to them he said if thou shalt say to this mountain be ye lifted and cast yonder into the sea and believe with thy heart that that which you have said will come to pass you shall have it is that true and then it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it james chapter 5 the full text is from 13 to 28 but give us verse 15 just for the sake of time james chapter 5 the bible says the prayer of faith somebody say the prayer of faith 
that means not every prayer is answered when you begin to read from verse 15 verse 13 the bible says if any man afflicted he said let him pray most believers pray but there are prayers that do not they carry a lot of energy perhaps they carry a lot of speaking perhaps but they may never produce result back to 15 please it says the prayer of faith that is the prayer that saves that is the prayer that raises up and that is the prayer that brings intervention the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he had committed sins they shall be forgiven him the prayer of faith you know what the prayer of faith is the prayer of faith is word inspired word based prayer one more time word inspired word based prayer not emotional prayer not God have come if you keep watching me like this I will also watch you it's just the mercy of God you need at that point not answer to prayers because remember God loves you so much he gave Jesus for you but I taught you that he is bound by his word all of these sentiments we whip up in the place of prayer we think because we are touched by our own sentiments it means that God is touched no he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities but he only responds to his word that's what makes him a God of integrity that not even his feelings can change his action the father saw Jesus dying and was touched and yet did not do anything because at that point he was seen that is what makes him a God of integrity so if you think by just whipping up emotions God will somehow find a way to continue to vindicate you you may be in trouble you need knowledge you need faith the prayer of faith will save the sick will raise him up and will bring intervention most believers pray but the basis of our prayer ministry is emotions or just shouting up and down once you are not praying in tongues the next thing you should be doing is praying word-based prayers father thank you your word declares that I should come to you boldly now I have come and that in the name of Jesus I ask this and that the Bible declares what things soever I desire this is what I desire the Bible says I should not be anxious for anything I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus I reject anxiety I bring before you these petitions the Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 6 that I should be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving I should let my request be made known father I bring before you this issue of rent I know that you are faithful I obtain wisdom to know what to do you are praying Are we together? But there are many people, the way they pray, even you who is listening to them at the other side of the fence, you are just imagining and say, you will even start praying and say, Lord, please just forgive this thing they are saying. Use my intercession to help them. And the danger is that when God keeps showing you mercy in ignorance, you will think it is the excellence of your approach that brought the result. So he will leave you so that maturity can step in. It's why a lot of new believers pray nonsense and still get answers. And then later God says, no, 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 no. You have to rise and strive. Remember our teaching to strive for mastery. And for that, pray properly. Are we together? That prayer, people pray in front of food, some have food, and it's wonderful. But that's just to help children. You are an adult, you approach that way, it's ingratitude. You have to settle down and understand how the Bible, look, maturity, maturity, maturity. If you see a child dropping five naira as offering, that's fine for his age. But if you see somebody who is working in an oil company, holds five naira whether it's new or old dropping it you will look at him and say sir give this even to your governors the bible says they will not accept because to whom much is given much is expected god is challenging us tonight if you want to walk in dominion then we have to obtain grace from god are we together to be people of word-based prayer and word-based declaration let me give you the final key thank you very much for your patience the final key tonight if you want to walk in dominion then you will need to encounter the anointing there is the anointing that activates this is called the power of God 
second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 the bible says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue acts chapter 4 and verse 33 very very powerful scripture the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord and great grace was upon them all ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 we're discussing the anointing now paul was praying over the church in ephesus and among the many things he prayed that would be revealed to them was the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe luke chapter 24 and verse 49 Jesus is speaking to the disciples now who would later become apostles of the Lamb. He says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Men can be endued with power from on high. Luke chapter 1, remember? The discussion between Gabriel and Mary, verse 34, Luke 1, 34 and 35. Then Mary said unto the angel, how shall these things be, seeing I know not a man? The answer, next verse. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God whatever comes out by the power of god must be attributed to god the power of god only produces that which pleases the lord listen to me it takes power to make promises manifest here and now you can read that by his stripes i am healed you can understand that confession and all these things are there but now the bible says if somebody is sick verse um james chapter 5 and verse 14 that if someone is sick he should call on the elders are we together now elders simply means those who by reason of experience with results they have obtained a ranking that is worth recognition the elders of the church and let them pray so prayer also solves the issue of sickness anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and then the bible says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick in john chapter 1 and verse 12 john chapter 1 and verse 12 but as many as received him he gave them power what do you get after you receive him power the power that makes you become the son of God. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Ye shall receive power. Tells you. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Ye shall receive power. That means one of the many supplies of the spirit is power. Give us Philippians 1.19. Power resides absolutely within the office of the holy spirit it says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ there is what the spirit supplies you cannot embrace power ignoring the ministry of the holy spirit is when you embrace the holy spirit mary's uh, angel, the angel gabriel told mary the holy ghost will come upon you first then the power of the highest will overshadow you he said you shall receive power after that the holy spirit is come upon you power is not independent of relationship with the holy spirit please keep that scripture philippians 1 19. but i know that this shall turn to my salvation that is dominion I know that whatever the issue is, I can correct it. I can enforce restoration. But it will happen through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as walking practically in dominion is concerned, 
these are the ordinances of heaven and he told job job one of the many reasons why you are a victim is because you do not understand the ordinances of heaven the laws that regulate the heavens and he says canst thou set up the dominion over the earth do you know the laws of the heavens do you know that heaven operates by knowledge do you know that heaven operates by understanding do you know that it takes faith that is why disobedience is not tolerated in heaven because heaven is a place that epitomizes faith in God every time there is rebellion in heaven defiance there is judgment immediately and there was war in heaven heaven is a place of perfect faith because of perfect obedience and then you must realize that dominion depends on words the ministry of prayer the ministry of prophetic declaration but words and finally there is an empowerment from God that comes upon individuals after all this is said that power grants you the grace it is the power that enforces compliance so if God tells you you are going to prosper you believe that word you understand the principles connected to it that becomes revelation you take steps in keeping with the truth then in the place of prayer and declarations now you are fulfilling the word component then you activate the power to prosper now you can have financial dominion is someone learning let them have dominion the ordinances of heaven you can carry this truth tonight like a student holding something that can profit him and stand before any situation and use this formula and find your way out when you stand before anything that seems to defy your dominion and authority don't just start speaking and say no in Jesus name you are going to go <clears throat> am I speaking out of knowledge am I speaking out of understanding what I am saying is it revelation to me no wonder the sons of Sceva remember we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches they violated the ordinance they spoke but it was not out of revelation and the demon said Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you Jesus I know why because Jesus had knowledge he had understanding he had revelation by the spirit jesus prayed he activated his possibilities through words jesus was a man of faith and the power of the highest came upon him we are where we are today by the grace of god but enforced through the application of this ordinance of heaven hear me families can enforce these ordinances businesses can enforce these ordinances marriages and homes can enforce these ordinances finance corporations can enforce these ordinances and even nations can enforce these ordinances we continue to speak over our dear nation and for many we, we keep saying in Jesus name Nigeria will change and it looks like no change is happening we have to go back first to the place of revelation and then the place of obedience what is the obedience if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and heal their land next is the ministry of prophetic intercessors I search for a man to stand in the gap that I may not destroy the land next are the people who are sent as sheep among wolves that God will grant believers the wisdom to know how to operate the cosmos and glorify Christ until that is done we are wasting our time the ordinances of heaven are you ready to pray tonight I want you to stand up on your feet don't begin to pray just stand up please stand in the next 10 seconds I want you to think about your life think about every aspect of your life whether you're outside you're inside following online I just want you to think for one minute about your life the many areas of limitation 
the many areas where the truth of dominion is not yet speaking in your life i want you to honestly and sincerely examine those areas just a few seconds of self-examination i have seen the faithfulness of god in the area of the anointing but the area of family life or area of finances or area of parenting raising my children or area of character i have not seen dominion happen lord i know there has to be a way i take responsibility just think for one minute we're about to pray so that you don't just pray arbitrarily lord my christian experience needs to come into a greater level of richness a greater level of quality let them have dominion is your mandate and your expectation over me many people have died who should not have died simply because i did not understand the ordinances of heaven there are many lives that are limited today perhaps including mine you'll be praying all because i do not understand the ordinances of heaven now i have been taught knowledge understanding becoming revelation and then faith and then the power of words in prayer and prophetic decrees and then the engracing of the spirit now i don't know which of these four or five areas you need to pray for give yourself a prayer point by what you find out as the limitation which of these five ordinances have you not worked consistently in keeping with go ahead and pray for some of you is sheer ignorance you are not even aware of the promises and there's nothing to be embarrassed about the house of God is Bethel, is the place of bread. It's time for you to pray. Lord, I'm tired of ignorance. Perhaps you just got born again. Congratulations for coming into the kingdom. Now you begin the experience of thriving in the kingdom through knowledge. There are those who have knowledge. Lord, I'm tired of awareness. I've gone for meetings, but I do not have a thorough comprehension what role do i have to play what is my own demand what do you require of me as far as this and that area of my life is concerned please make sure you are praying for many of us is the area of obedience stepping out in faith kill fear oh god from my life i need to step out in faith in total obedience taking the required action that commits God for some of you you have been too silent to walk in dominion too silent no prayer too silent no prophetic decrees or wrong decrees it says say not before an angel I made a mistake shalika prandege baratsu siyata is someone praying let the redeemed of the Lord say so the Bible declares in prayer what things soever ye desire when ye pray most of us have lost the art of prayer genuine prayer commanding power with God in prayer and prophetic declar declarations many of us are full of negative statements we speak negatively about ourselves, our children, negatively about others, negatively about situations and circumstances. Our words are not faith-filled. It's time to change your confession. It has to be as the Word of God says. The ministry of prayer, the ministry of prophetic declaration. Someone is praying. And finally, I'd like you to pray father the level of anointing that must rest upon my life from tonight to activate dominion practically in my life i receive it i receive it i receive it my home must reflect dominion my job must reflect dominion my corporation must reflect dominion you're a man of god pray I must see dominion expressed in the work that the Lord has committed to my hands. Tired of being a victim of situations and circumstances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
as we wrap up this this series i want to speak over your life the anointing part that one is my responsibility under god and i will speak on that over your life but let me just make a one minute altar call very quickly <clears throat> prophesying over people who are not saved will not do much the anointing of the spirit only supports what is pro jesus only supports what is pro christ the anointing of the holy spirit cannot support what is antichrist you are here haven't heard the teaching on dominion the holy spirit is speaking to you that you need to make your ways right with jesus you are making a decision for the first time or you need a renewal before i speak over your life we have just one minute for you very boldly wherever you are inside and outside i want you to quickly make your way to the front very boldly come and stand before me god bless you thank you for your courage some of you need to be like the gentleman who testified you can make today that day go ahead go ahead god bless you apostle i'm making this decision for jesus once and for all please come for some of you you are saying i need to rededicate my life to jesus i need to make it right with him join him very quickly you can just turn and face me god bless you thank you koinonia is this the best you can do let's encourage them as they come god bless you he can give you a new beginning god bless you god bless you young old male female please come come to jesus god bless you thank you thank you for the courage thank you for the courage they are still coming a few more seconds they are still coming let's celebrate them win that war of destiny once and for all you want to walk in dominion remember the bible says man that is of honor and does not know can die like a beast in the field do not allow the devil waste you because you are outside of this covenant of christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord thank you very much ladies and gentlemen i salute every one of you for the courage to step out here it takes a lot of courage to come stand before god's people but let me tell you that you're not just standing before a man you're standing before jesus himself jesus is watching you with joy in his heart and this will be the best decision that you have made hallelujah may i please request that you lift your right hand as always those who are following by way of television you are following online here's an opportunity for you to make jesus lord of your life even if you are watching by way of broadcast the power of god remains ever true as I pray for them, I want you to make this decision and pray that prayer, believing in your heart, and you will be saved. Those in front and all who have come out across the overflows and across the nations of the earth, please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you are the Son of God. I believe that you were raised from the dead by the spirit of god and that you live and reign forever right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i decree and declare from tonight and forever that I have peace with God I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come to you and the Bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise cast away Lord they have come making honest declarations of faith I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that according to their confessions let their sins be forgiven and that you give them a new beginning even by the spirit of god i decree and declare that you experience the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit may you be grounded and established in righteousness you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you please i like you to quickly follow the gentlemen the counselors waving their hands by my right 
May God bless you. Just a quick word and you'll be back to your seat. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Let me speak over your life now. They are also receiving whilst they are there. Hallelujah. So that we are sure that the proclamations are not wasted. I want to declare upon your life. One of the ways that we access grace and power is through impartation. I want you to believe from the depth of your heart that something will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare the grace that puts you practically in dominion beginning from today. May that grace rest upon you now. I prophesy upon your life even by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power that is derived from the word. The power that is derived from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let it begin to speak practically in your life from today. Practically in your life from today. Practically in your life from today. Hear me. In the name of Jesus from today. As you declare it so you will see. I say it again. As you declare it so you will see it. The centurion said for I am a man under authority having soldiers here and there I say to one go and he goeth to one come and he cometh from today whatever you say go to it must go and whatever you call to come it must come and hear me for many of you who have been calling things and they have refused to come I join my faith with you and I call it to your life now and everything you have you have told to go and it has refused to go by the power that raised Christ from the dead we drive it permanently from you from today whoever you bless is blessed whatever you bless is blessed whatever you touch is blessed I pray for every business here no more going down every home here no more backwardness every spiritual life here upward and forward only in the name of jesus christ from today no enchantment and divination against your life will survive and hear me if there be anything that has authorized satan over and against your life in the name of jesus we bring him and his cohorts under your feet Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. I prophesy to you, anybody that says over your dead body, the ground will open and swallow them. Anywhere your name is taken, Makatosh Kalibarato Ziata, Embrekete Kaparakatosh, it shall not stand in the name of Jesus. Hear me, the power to create your possibilities and the power to manifest those possibilities, receive it right now. The power to correct anomalies and the power to command restoration, receive it now. In the name of Jesus and by the privilege of priesthood, I empower you this night Go and correct every wrong thing in your life. Go and correct every wrong thing. Financially, maritally, spiritually, intellectually, in your health, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. From tonight, anything you see that is inconsistent with what is written, even if it's what you saw or what you heard, or what you dreamt or what was told you I empower you to change it with the written word yeah. hear me anyone here who is a victim of I heard prophecy anyone who is a victim of I saw visions anyone who is a victim of they told me altered perceptions I change it now by the power of it is written anyone who has seen you dying I speak to you you will live 
anyone who has seen you poor i speak to you you must prosper anyone who has said your territory will be hostile to you i prophesy over you for you there is a lifting up favor rests upon you the dominion power of the spirit rests upon you in the name of jesus i pray for you precious people of god the spirit of revelation that gives you knowledge and understanding drawing light out of scripture and experiences receive that grace now no more study of the bible without revelation high level spiritual illumination hear me by this dominion power anywhere you are supposed to be called in this season for good news and for your rising i don't care how long it has been i declare they must identify you and lift you hear me i'm speaking to the body of christ but particularly those who are connected to this grace from today the grace for influence the grace for dominion the grace to be exalted above nations and territories i release that grace of help them i release that grace upon you now you will be distinguished in such a spectacular way i want you to believe what i'm telling you nations will honor you governments will honor you not just individuals they will look for you regardless your background they will look for you regardless your limitations in the name of jesus christ may god put it in the heart of great men to look for you may god put it in the heart of helpers to help you Can you hear me I know that our nation is being plagued with a lot of things let me speak for one minute we owe a duty as priests to speak over this nation and over abuja i stand by the apostolic we close the spiritual borders of fct over terrorists i decree and declare that the spiritual borders of the fct is hereby closed against any activity of terrorism in the name of jesus christ and as it is close over this city is close over your home too no devil of darkness will kidnap you and your children in the mighty name of jesus christ and anybody that vows to become your enemy quarter to execution may this dominion covenant fight them Let me pray over your finances. Please believe it. Among the many indices that measure dominion, second or third only to your spiritual health is your financial level. I am one person who believes that the blessing of the Lord upon a heart that loves Jesus and a mind that is transformed is a blessing indeed. Let me repeat, the blessing of the Lord activated upon a heart that loves Jesus and a mind that is transformed is a blessing indeed. Resources only become a disadvantage and a disaster if they rest in the heart of one who has a heart that does not love Jesus and a mind that is not superior in thinking. And because I'm sure of what God has done in your life, I speak over you. Some of you this week, in the name of Jesus, may my God surprise you financially. May my God open strange doors, connect you to systems and structures. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every limitation that has come with lack, I decree and declare whether corporately or institutionally be delivered from it now finally let me speak over your body there is a spirit that is sweeping across this nation and regions just killing people using the guise of sickness people will just tell you I'm having stomach ache having this having that and then you just die there are others they look at you and say oh you are this this headache is like that is part of your family i decree and declare every sickness that is locking around your body by the power that raised christ from the dead since this dominion mandate has rested upon you let that sickness leave you now cancer leaves you now high blood pressure leaves you now blindness leaves you now 
blood conditions go now blood pressures are normalized now pile leaves you now bone conditions leave you now in the name of Jesus so that you can enjoy health remember dominion is for men spirits that have human bodies and anything that fights your body is fighting the mandate of dominion upon you therefore may your body be perfected the Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is broken your bones will not be broken in Jesus name I pray wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise father we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen thank you very much for your patience we're about to share the grace and after we share the grace may I please request that we're careful as we come out as a crowd of people so that you don't enjoy yourself just walk with whatever directives you are given and for the sake of time and then because of the situation on ground if you can give a lift to anybody around you that would be a very welcome development provided you understand you are comfortable with the people please do so the Lord honor you and bless you in Jesus name let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen god bless you prophesy to 10 people tell them let them have dominion thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was